the steps for Kapadu is testing the structure of your teeth test are the following. The first step is to read the claim. You can't do the following steps if you don't if you don't read the claim and understand it. You have to state if the average is either greater than or less than dx, or any other, or equal or not equal to. Now, the second step you have to write the hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. This is with any of the possible outcomes that there is. Each one has their own. The third step is to arrange the data, whether it's the mean or the or the x or the sample size or whatever data you have. You have to arrange it so then you can decide which test to use. The next step is to sketch the situation because it's normally distributed. We have to make a sketch like this one. In which our hypothesis will be here, in the middle. Now, depending if it's an alternative hypothesis or, or a new hypothesis, we would see if the rejection area is either left tail or right tail or both. In some cases, it could be both of them. After that, we have to calculate the critical T. In this case, it's a critical T because it's a sample. We're using a sample, not the entire population. In order to calculate the critical T, we'll have to use the, uh, tab the T table in order to find it. Now, from the T table, we use the alpha. And from the alpha, depending if it's one tail, two tail, or uh, whichever of those, we decide which one would be the critical T. Afterwards, we will use this formula to calculate the calculated T. We would put the critical T in the area shaded in such a way that those are the areas that are the rejection zones of the null hypothesis. And the, the calculated T would determine if the answer is within the rejection areas or the failing to reject areas or accepting areas of our sketch. In step number seven, you, you write if you accept or reject your, your new hypothesis. And in step number eight, you write a conclusion or a statement uh, about the, the claim of your problem. So the problem we choose for our project is the following. In an elementary school, uh, they have a thousand students. The principal of the, of the school thinks that the average IQ of the students at the school is at least 110. To prove her point, she administers an IQ test to 20 randomly selected students. Among the sample students, the average IQ is 108 with a standard deviation of 10. Based on the results, should the principal accept or reject the original hypothesis, assuming that the significance level is 0 0.01? So we're going to answer the problem. Uh, the first step is, as my teammates already mentioned, is to, uh, to read the claim. In this case, the principal said that he think that he, she thinks that the IQ of the students is greater than or equal to 110. So we're gonna write the mu is greater or equal to 110, and as mu is equals greater or equal to, the hypothesis will be the same. In this case, the hypothesis will be 100 greater or equal to 110, and the alternative hypothesis will be the opposite to greater or equal to. In this case, will be less than or less than to 110. The next step is to arrange the data. In the rich data uh, from the problem, we have the, the significance level is 0 0.01. The standard deviation of this sample is 10. The mule is 110. The number of people that participate in the sample, there are 20. And the sample mean is 108. Okay, so the next step, step number four, is to find a critical T. To find a critical T, we need the significant level, and in this case it's 0 0.01, and the number of the students that participated in the sample. In this case it's 20, but because if it, it's a sample, we're going to subtract one to the 20, making it 19, and as we have already the numbers to find the critical T, we're going to uh, look for them in the T table, and we're going to find the number 19, with the, num the 0 0.01 and we need matches the 2.538 that will be our critical C. Uh, in step number five we're going to start to sketch our norm normal distribution uh, graph 
um, because it's uh, um, the alternative hypothesis is less than our normal distribution sketch will be a left tail, making the critical T a negative critical T. So then we're going to place the critical T as a two point, a negative two point three eight. Okay, so step number six is to find our calculated t. How do we find it? Uh, we have to hear the formula. It's x bar, that is the sample mean, minus the mu, divided into the standard deviation, but of the sample, that, is, that will be also divided by the, the sample number in its square root. So, it will be 108 minus 110 divided into the sample, standard deviation sample that is 10, divided also in the square root of 20, that is our number of students that participated in the, in the sample. That will make us equal to negative 0.89442. That will be our calculated T. So we're going to place it in the sketch, making it into here. 0.8944. Making it out of the rejection zone. We already found the critical T and the calculated T. We can now proceed to the solution. Uh, and we actually can reject the null hypothesis because it doesn't fall into the rejection area. And there is no, su there is sufficient evidence or information to prove that the average IQ of the students is greater than 110 in the school.